Hi, welcome to Shoreline Design. We're back again for another show. Now, we're always looking for new ideas, so before we start on this show, please send in any ideas you'd like to see, me, see us talk about here or you'd like to see me do. Um, we're trying to find our way here at Shoreline Design and how we're going to use this new medium. So today we're going to talk about one of the things I started doing when I was first a little boy, I guess. So we want to talk about today about sea glass. Now, we still get a lot of people in here who don't know what sea glass is. And on the other hand, we have people who have made a, well, a hobby of picking up sea glass no matter where they go from all around the world. So all it is really is waste. So these are just little pieces of glass for whatever reason have gotten broken. They have been tossed on the shore back and forth, back and forth, taking the edges off and come up and up, coming up with a unique look. Now there's a lot of fake sea glass out there and people will tumble them and so on. So one of the things you need to understand about true sea glass is it's not just tumbled. What happens is, is the water or the salt in the water actually erodes some of the different parts like lime and soda out of the glass so what you get is a very bubbled surface so if you were to look at it under a microscope or a magnifying glass you're going to see little um, indents in the glass and they all kind of look like the letter c and that's one of the ways you tell true sea glass so this is one of many 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 jars that we have here of sea glass they're all different colors and there's the different rarities of course so what I want to show you here on, I have on my bench of course is both the raw sea glass and what I have is some of the different settings that we have here at shoreline design so one of the things I want to make sure that everybody understands is that each piece of sea glass is different. And what we do here is we make the settings for each piece separate uh, or uniquely for that piece of sea glass. And it's the same thing that we can do for that piece of glass that you're hoarding. A lot of my customers, of course, we, we jokingly say that we're hoarders. We, we collect sea glass, but we don't want to let them go. So if you're one of those people and you have that special piece of sea glass, uh, we get a lot come by mail. People will mail us something and we'll do the setting that you like or in any way that you want it. And I'm just going to show you some of the different ways that we do sea glass. So when I started first, of course, one of the things I'm going to show you under here is I started to wrap. How's that look, Wayne? Perfect. Okay. So what we do here in Shoreline Design is I wrap that in pure silver. So when we're talking pure silver, we're talking about 99.9 .9 of pure silver. Sterling is 925 or 92.5% silver. I use the pure silver for a number of reasons. Um, one, it's, uh, it's softer, easier to wrap but also has a, a much richer look. And when it's compared to the sort of matte finish on sea glass, it's, it's really quite extraordinary, the change from the unwrapped to the wrapped. So, not every piece of sea glass can be wrapped. Because we don't cut or shape them, sometimes we have to come up with innovative ways. And I'm just gonna bring up our basket sea glass. How's that, Wayne? A little more to the uh, back. A little more yep. to the back? Yep. Okay, so what we have here is a piece of sea foam sea glass. So, and it's set also in a, in a soldered uh, pure silver uh, basket or wire basket. Now, with the sea foam, Sea foam is one of the more common ones that we have here, but on PEI, it also has a very good chance of being uh, one of two main producers of sea foam. One was the old green Coke bottle, which 
a few of us uh, my age remembered a little green Coke bottle. I think it was eight ounce. And the other one that most people don't realize is on PEI, we were big on the rum running. And the sea glass of sea foam is the same formula for the Bacardi rum bottles that were used by Al Capone. So the nickname for the sea foam is rum and coke. Okay, so if you're going to have a rum and coke, you're looking for sea foam, and you get to pick your story. It's a piece of Coke bottle, or it was drank by Al Capone when he was here on the shore in his leather thong bathing suit. Okay? You get to pick the story. Now, this one, I'm going to hold this one up towards the wall. Yep. And it's also in a basket form, but it is lavender. So, lavender glass is one of your rarer glasses because you can date it. Most lavender, or all lavender glass that we would see here on the shore, or 99.999%, started out as clear. And what happened is the people who were hand making it used too much manganese in the formula. And after about 100 years, this glass it starts to, with the ultraviolet light, it will start to turn lavender. Now, some of the older pieces that are left out in the sun will actually go so purple, or go so lavender they're purple, and you can't even see through them. So this one here is just starting that process, but pretty much all of the sea glass that is lavender would be pre-1915. Okay, now the other one, that is interesting and I want to hold that one up towards the wall there now this glass is green milk glass okay that sounds like an oxymoron but we have white milk glass we have green milk glass blue milk glass and basically this glass colored glass was developed in England and it was used as a substitute for the Chinese porcelain that was coming in. So we see a lot of this. Um, if it's tumbled well in the ocean, it's, it is quite exquisite. Now this one here is nice, but it's not our top of the line. Now we get into another glass. And this is a kind of a fun one. I want to show you this one. Okay. okay, so this is blue glass. Now everybody says blue glass is very, very rare, and actually it's not. Blue glass is it's just highly desired by people. It's a nice color when it's matte finish. It's, um, it's quite attractive. But most of the blue glass that we find on the shores come from a very common source. Now I'm going to hold this back up here again and just where my finger is, not my thumb, you're going to see the top of a lip. And this is from a Noxzema bottle. So back in the days before everybody slathered on the suntan lotion uh, to keep from getting burned as we do with the kids today, what we did is we went to the shore we got sunburned like a lobster, and mom would put Noxzema on us, okay? So many of these bottles uh, were Noxzema bottles that ended up being left on the shore. So we see a lot of Noxzema bottles on the shore, broken, that have been tumbled, and it all started as our first treatment for sunburn, as, as what I can guess. Okay, so, and I just want to show you the different types of settings. I'm going to show you this one. This is again, oh, one second here now, is again is a piece of Noxzema bottle. You can see the lip on the top, and I dropped it. And this is the setting that I made for this piece, and I'm going to bring it up. So this setting, a silver setting, is made to fit this piece exactly. 
So this is a unique piece. So what you have is a piece of glass that has been shaped by the ocean uh, in its own unique way, depending on how it was broken. And we have actually fitted out a piece of sterling silver to match this exactly. This will be a unique piece on, on many different fronts. Okay, so raw material. Here is a piece of sea foam. And then we get into this other one here that most people pass over because they think it's a stone. And this is actually black sea glass. Now this black sea glass, I'm going to go back up to the, the small camera again, comes from these very dark green liquor bottles. Okay. So... The black sea glass that we have here is rated one of the rarest of the sea glasses. Now, on PEI, it's not so rare. Uh, and people have asked me all the time, why is black sea glass not so rare here? Well, I said it's because there were liquor, liquor bottles. And we understand that some of the sailors who came here actually drank. Now, it's controversial. But it does explain why we have so many of these black sea glass pieces here on our shores. Now, the other interesting piece that we have, of course, is we have red. Okay? Towards the wall. Towards the wall. Mm -hmm. Now, this is kind of an interesting piece here because it's what we call flash glass. So you see the two pieces of glass. You see the red on the outside of the white. Now, one of the main reasons they did that is back then they used 24 karat gold to create the red color. So rather than, and it was only very, very small amounts of uh, gold that were used to create red. But even so, the small amount was rationed. And so what they would do is they would create like a skin of red over a clear bottle. So this is what we call flash glass. And the other thing, I guess, why red is so rare is that it was the gold that they used. And it was never commercially viable to be making, you know, jam jars out of red, red bottles. So it was a very decorative type um, process. Now, the last one I want to show you here, of course, is, is the green. Now, the greens that we find on the shore here range everywhere from lime green, which would be from, I think we had, um, I can't even think of the name, of, we have very light green pop bottles here. Uh, we have 7-Up, of course, which most people, you know, remember. The 7-Up was a very distinctive green color. But the whole range from turpentine bottles all the way up to um, some of the thinner bottles and decorative. So we have a lot of green here on PEI. Now, having seen all the different colors of glass, and we have pink and we have, oh, decorative glass that would be op with opalescence on it and so on. But those are more rare. So what I want to show you, of course, is one of the finished pieces here that I think we did a very good job on. And this is a black sea glass sterling silver bracelet. Now, we just had on our website here a few days ago, I had one with eight pieces of pastels. So different, very light colored sea glass and they're quite stunning the black sea glass very elegant so and this would be a matching this is a matching black sea glass in sterling and fine silver so Can you show that one again yeah so we'll bring her back up a little bit yeah there we go yeah so what people end up doing or people say to me all the time I have all the sea glass but I don't know what to do with it 
Um, I used to sit there and run my fingers through it. But I find when talking to people, most sea glass that you have has a story. It was picked up on a certain beach or with a certain friend or it was a special occasion. So a lot of the sea glass that we pick up as sea glass pickers has that little particular story that makes it worth more than what you just, you know, the glass itself, if you will. So have a look through your, your, um, your hordes of sea glass and your little stash. If you want, you can take a picture of it and we'll have a look at what we can, can do for you uh, when it comes to making sea glass. Okay, so I think we're almost at the end of our show. And what I want to just show you before we go, uh, next week we're going to be talking about this. We're going to be talking about enameling. Okay, and this is where I take powdered glass, put it on copper, and create glass pieces of jewelry with real depth and color. So I hope you come back next week. Look forward to it.